Hello everyone, this is Sherwin here from TechOS and today I'm taking a look at an app for the Mac called PDF Expert. Now PDF Expert is an app that's designed to give you a huge amount of capabilities when it comes to manipulating PDFs, whether that's editing PDFs or annotating them. PDF Expert has been given a quite a few awards on the App Store. They include Editor's Choice by Apple, 2015 App of the Year, uh, you know, in the Mac App Store and top number one paid app in the app Mac App Store. So the version obviously I'm showing you today is for the Mac. However, there's also there are also versions for iOS devices that have exactly the same functionality as the desktop versions with absolutely no compromises. So do let me know if you want to see a video on the version for iOS if that's something that interests you. Today I'll be taking a look at the Mac version obviously, and this app retails for 54.99 uh, Great British pounds. 59.99 US dollars, 60 US dollars, and 4,900 rupees. So if you want to buy it, you can do that. However, I have a special sort of offer for you. You can get 10% off of the full prices that I just read out to you using the purchase link in the description of the video. Now the link might not be there straight away if you're watching, if you're an early watcher uh, when this video has gone up. This today is the 17th of November 2017. So if you just wait and the link should be there, um, I'll try and get it there as soon as possible. But anyway, I'm going to go straight in and I'm just going to launch the app. So I've actually already got it minimized down here. I'm just going to open it up. And this is what you see when you first launch the app. Now I'm going to leave the main window. I'm just going to go through the preferences just to show you what I sort of uh, recommend you have as some of the preferences that are available. So if you go to PDF Expert at the top and go down to preferences. Now here, since I've been testing it out, I've had it as the default PDF reader. I think I probably will keep it there because I have, do enjoy using PDF Expert. And you've obviously always got the option to go back to using preview for specific instances or if you want to change it back up afterwards you can then I'd go down here change your author name so change it to whatever you want to have there so that when you uh, go into the document information it will have that name there and then also you can have here open a document in either a new tab in the same window or a new window so if you want to have everything in tabs and make it easier to organize then you can have that you've got advanced here and obviously make sure that you've got that switched off because you want to try if you want to try and save space and if you want to participate in a public beta program you can do but that's basically the preferences so now we'll get straight into the actual app so this here you've got a little help how to section at the top and this just gives you if you click on them each of these it'll give you a sort of little tutorial on how to carry out these basic functions obviously that's what I'm going to show you today so we won't go on that now down here you've got the recent so I've got it cleared at the moment but if I had any recent PDFs it will just they'll all be displayed there so I can quickly access them instead of having to navigate to them in the finder we've got here at the top open file which is what we're going to do and you can either select a file or I've got a file over here, just a PDF, which I've just got there. And what I can do is I can drag it and drop it in. And what it will do is now open it. So we've got two main sections to the editing interface in PDF Expert. So actually, I'm going to make this full screen just so you can see it better. And I will zoom in using Command and Plus. And you see we've got two sections. We've got Annotate and we've got Edit. So we're going to start on Annotate and we'll go start going through the tools. So here we've got the highlight tool, which is quite um, self-explanatory. So you click on that and then you can just choose some text. So it can read text within a PDF. So if I want to go here to CO2 emissions, I want to highlight those, highlight that, and it recognizes the text and highlights that. So that's the highlight tool, very self-explanatory. Um, it's the same thing for the underline tool. So if I go to the underline tool and I decide that I want to underline here, just to emphasize it's got a manual transmission, I can do that and then the strike through perhaps if this is the incorrect power output over here I can sort of cross this out then I can go to the notes tool over here and this is basically a tool where I can highlight something so here I'll just highlight this um, or I'll just click on this 165 PS and I can just type in say uh, this is the figure for the 2 litre diesel engine um, change required so this is great for example if I'm going to be collaborating with people sending this PDF to multiple people uh, so I can kind of um, communicate what uh, needs to be done with this PDF or communicate different things uh, in a way so anyone else who opens the PDF in PDF expert will see this note and they can act upon it or do whatever needs to be done here we've got the pen tool so this will 
allow you to just annotate anything. Um, obviously, I'm using a mouse here on an iMac, so it's not going to be the most precise thing. Uh, but if you're using a MacBook, you can. I think you can draw on the trackpad, which will be a lot more precise, especially if you've got the new MacBook Pro with the enormous trackpad. And if you're on, if you're using the iOS version, you can use your finger, which is a lot more natural, or the Apple Pencil if you've got that. Erase tool again, very self-explanatory. I can just go and erase what I've done here. Uh, which I'll do because it's not very, uh, it's not particularly useful being there. After that, we've got the text tool. So this basically allows you to um, just input new text. So if I go here um, and next to the title here, I write, um, I'm just going to write an insignia grand sport, just to, if that's the name of the model. Um, so I'll just put that in there. And you do have your options over here. So I can change the font, the sort of, the style for that particular font because I want to make this bold. I can make it bold. I can go to here. I can change the size if I want it to be a bit bigger. Obviously, you've got color, and then you've got background color, and you can rotate it. That sort of thing. Next, I'm going to show you the shape tool, uh, which is again quite self-explanatory. So what I can do is I can just I don't know add a shape around this elite nav, you know, sort of title, um, just to make it look better. So you've got your shape tool there. Again, you can choose. Uh, the opacity, the width of the stroke, and all that sort of stuff uh, along this right side, which is the formatting pane. Next, we've got the stamp tool. So, what I can do uh, is go to the stamp and I can have all these various stamps that come with the app. So, perhaps if I want to add a completed stamp, I can just drag it off and put it. I'm just going to put it below the price in this case. Click off the stamp tool, and then I can sort of resize it, reposition it to where I want to. So, here I'll just leave it there for now. Um, so that's the stamp tool and if you if I go back into here you can see I've got custom so I can actually add stamps so I can go in and literally type whatever text so if I want to type in I don't know tech OS for example um, I can do that change the color of it um, and just sort of have it like that so I can just click done and then that will be a stamp which I can then go ahead and click and stamp it down wherever I want it I'll get rid of it for now and then you've got the signature tool so if you click on here I've got a custom or a signature I've done here I go to add a signature, I can type my name, so I can just type here, if I can type my name properly. Uh, so I've got my name here, I can change the colour to whatever, if I need to have a different certain colour, I can have that there. Trackpad, obviously this is irrelevant for me because I'm using a mouse on an iMac, but if you've got a magic trackpad or you've got a MacBook, you can draw on your trackpad and input your signature like that, so it's very precise, or image, so I can actually go in and write, write it down on paper and then I could sort of hold it up to my eyesight camera to scan it or I can insert an image of something which I've already uh, of a signature I've done before so you've got a few options for inputting signatures um, and then uh, I can just if I go back here actually and get my signature that I had I can hit done and then I can, what I can do is just drag it to wherever I want to have it so I will just put it here just down here somewhere and I'll put it at the bottom of the page I can resize it to make it to get the right effect that I want. And then uh, that's basically it for the annotation section. So you've got all these tools up here which allow you to annotate your PDFs and play around with them. Here we've got edit, which is the next big section of the PDF expert interface. So uh, with edit, I'll just quickly go through this. So you've got text, so this allows me to uh, add text. So I can add text boxes, move them around, and obviously I'll get my formatting tools at the side over here, so like I had before got my text tool, I've got image which lets me insert images and just add things in. I've got link which basically will scan the document for links and I can sort of click it and it will recognize that as a link and I can link it to the page, in this case the voxel page or I can choose to a different page within the PDF that I want it to link to uh, which is handy if you want to have sort of like a contents page and you want each link where you tap on it or click on it and it will go to another page in the PDF so that's helpful. And then we've got the, the redact sort of section, which is a way of masking certain bits of content. So perhaps if I want to hide the price or something for whatever reason, I can sort of go over that and it will black it out. And I can choose whether I want to black out or an array, so it will just completely remove it. So then if I go to here and do that, it removes it instead of just blacking it out. So you have a few options there. I'll just keep it on blackout for now. But that's basically it for that the, the editing section. So you've got annotation and edit, and, and that's the edit section covered. Uh, the annotation section is, I think, where PDF Expert is sort of ahead of other apps that are out there. Just because of the, how much you can customise your PDFs, I just feel it's much more ahead than other apps out there. 
Uh, finally, I'm just going to show you these buttons up here. So this shows you your sidebar, which you can just see your thumbnails of pages. So if you come from something like preview, you'll be familiar with this. So it's nice to have that. You've got another view, which is your kind of grid view. So this shows you all your pages and sort of a thumbnail. And from here, I can add pages, do stuff. I can drag them around, so change the order, uh, which is something you can have. And close out of there. And here you've got your split view, so you can actually have multiple PDFs being viewed, or you can have multiple pages. So here, if I can go, I can have it sort of, so I can view two pages at once. And at the top here, we've obviously got searching, so I can search through things in the PDF. So if I want to go to, I don't know, sound, um, just as an example, and it will show you all the different places within the PDF that's sound. I can double click on it and it will just come up and highlight it temporarily so I can go to that area. So that's basically it for the review of PDF Expert. It's a very, very intense app and I think that it's great for someone who wants to have extra functionality with their PDFs, uh, being able to edit, annotate, and obviously if you get the iOS versions, you'll be able to sync between your devices. So that's it for this video. Again, remember to check the purchase link in the description of this video when it's sort of available uh, for you to be able to get 10% off the purchase of this app. And if you've got any questions or comments on anything in this video, uh, or you just want any other general help or advice, then do get in contact with me using the details that are in the description of this video. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and also do subscribe by hitting the logo that is in the middle of the screen. And also do consider watching the videos that are either side of that logo. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.